John Lusk here at Lusk Archery Adventures. Series testing, successful hunting. I've got another really new, innovative broadhead to test here today. It's by VPA. VPA has been around the block for a long time. I think they have more individual models of fixed blade broadheads than any other company in the world today. They certainly make a lot of them. I think they have 70 plus different models, but they've just come out with a new one called the Omega. And I've gotten a ton of requests to test this broadhead. So thankfully I got some to test and uh, they're a 200 grain single double bevel broadhead. Okay, I'll explain that in just a minute here. But uh, I'm gonna be putting these to the test using my regimen for 2023. And for a detailed description of what those tests are and why I do them, please check out the video I released earlier this year called 2023 Broadhead Test Process. As well as below each uh, video in the video description, I explain the process and I give the score sheet of how each broadhead does in that, in that, uh, in, in, for each of the individual tests in that process. And I'm gonna be using my Bowtech CP28, set at 72 pounds. I'm using a Bishop FOC King Arrows for most of my testing, but then I use the Bishop Fat Eliminators for the really hard impact ones because they can handle it. So let's zoom on in here, go through some of these design features and specifications of this Omega, and then put it to the test. Here's a good look at this head, and man, there's all kinds of neat things going on here. So let me dive in and explain a bit. First of all, the materials, it's uh, machined out of a single bar of S7 tool steel, and it has a Rockwell hardness of 56 to 58. Now, the big advantage of using uh, S7 tool steel, it's definitely more expensive, but the big advantage is you can get a really high Rockwell hardness while also maintaining a really great impact resistance. Uh, a lot of other broadheads like a stainless steel, if you bring it to a Rockwell hardness like this, when it impacts, there's a good chance it's going to fracture because it just doesn't have that impact resistance. But S7 tool steel can be really hard and really uh, resistant to impact. So that's why you're paying more for it. It's a great option for a single bevel head where that edge often experiences edge chatter. S7 really makes that uh, a bit more difficult to get some kind of edge chatter there. Okay, so in terms of the dimensions, it's one and one sixteenth inches in diameter. So, you know, moderate size cut. Um, and a moderate length overall, not too long, not one of the super short ones either. It's a single bevel sharpened, like I said, but what they call it is they call it a, a, a single double bevel, okay? Single double bevel. What they mean by it is this, the first third of its overall length is double bevel, okay? So if you can look there from the side, you see that it's it's sharpened on both sides, okay? It's a sharpened here and sharpened here. It's a double bevel. And the, the, the thought with that is that's gonna be extra strong. It's just gonna wedge, boom, right into bone, penetrate really well. It's super thick right there. The ferrule goes all the way down to the tip. There's no seam like that to get hung up on. So it's gonna penetrate in with that double bevel design, then it switches over to a single bevel. And uh, the last two thirds are single bevel. And you can see that single bevel there. When I get the light on, you can see the single bevel, it switches over right at that point. And then that's a 26 degree bevel, and that's gonna cause some rotation. So it penetrates the bone like that, and then as it presses in, it rotates and it pries the bone apart, allowing the uh, the arrow and the rest of the broadhead to glide right through into the animal. So that's the theory behind it. Again, this uh, 26 degree bevel right there, the double bevel in the front. Now, another thing that's really unique about it is this lay flat design, this lay flat technology. You can see if I get the, the light on it, yeah, they've, uh, they've kind of sharpened it, if you will, or like, you know, kind of machined it to where you can lay this entire broadhead flat on any surface, on any stone, and just sharpen it, okay? It's really easy to lay flat. You're not just trying to catch the bevel, but the whole broadhead itself just lays flat. You can just like 
like lay it down like that, the whole thing. And it's easy to find that bevel and then just to sharpen it. And you can use any stone for that. You can use the bottom of a coffee mug. You can use the top of your, your mirror. I've done that in the field or top of your, your window. Roll the window down a little bit. It's a little rough on the top of the glass. I've used the edge of a mirror in a hotel room to sharpen broadheads. But you can pretty you can do it on stone out in the field. When, when I'm doing it in the shop, I like to use the Stay Sharp Guide uh, diamond plates. They have increasing coarseness or decreasing coarseness. They get finer and finer, and I can hone a really good edge on pretty much any single bevel. But it'd be you know super easy to do that here. Now, what you do when you when you uh, are sharpening like that with a single bevel, you're going to create a little burr, like a little bit of an overhang on the back. After you stroke it a bunch of times, you want to keep stroking it until you get a burr, and you can feel it with your fingernail, fingernail or credit card you can see it a little bit it's a really small burr and then what you do is you lay something flat on the back and then you get rid of that burr and then that's what gives you the extra sharp edge to it okay there is a challenge with this that if you lay it flat okay like say you've got a burr then you lay it flat you can't get something completely flat to get rid of the burr because you've got an extra bevel here. So you really can only lay it flat for this portion, but you can't lay it flat because this, this metal here is part of the lay flat technology. So what they recommend is you just use a, a strop, like a leather strop, and, just, and then just do it by hand and just lay it flat like that best you can without uh, you know, angling into it. Okay, that's how they say to do that. Now they give you another option. Another option is you can lay it flat, okay, you sharpen that like that, then you lay it flat this way, okay, and to get that burr off, you just lay it flat again, and then you really sharpen it away, but if you do that, you're going to change this from a single bevel to a slightly bit of double bevel, and you're going to have, a instead of a 26 degree total bevel, you're going to have a 40 degree bevel, so it's going to be primarily a single bevel, but a little bit of a double bevel as this edge lines up with this bevel. Okay, it's hard to explain, but, but it's still going to be single bevel, but a little bit of double bevel in the back. That's the only way to do it if you lay it flat to try to get off that burr. And if you sharpen it enough, you can change this to a 40 degree. Okay, that's going to make it a little bit stronger. Um, and it's still going to have some rotation, but not as much rotation. Now let me show you one that they've done this. Okay, they did this in their shop. VPA did and sent me one that on this side it's the same. Okay, there's that single bevel that we've talked about, but on the back side they sharpened the whole thing. They laid it down uh, on the on the stone and sharpened it. So you can see, let me get the light on it. You can see a little bit of a double bevel right there, an extra bevel. That's changed this bevel from 26 degree single to 40 degree kind of single with a little bit of a double, okay? So it's kind of hard to explain, but, but that way this is all the same beveling like that, but it took away that 26 degree and now it's no longer completely a single bevel. So it's really interesting. I, I, I'm not sure exactly what the advantages of each are. I'm going to do some testing with both of these models, but most of the testing I'm going to do with this one, okay? This, this one that they've sharpened both sides because it's so much easier to do that, to just kind of lay it flat and sharpen both sides. So I'm just going to be doing most of my testing with that, but I'll test the sharpness of each of them to see if there's a difference in that regard. So really eager to put this innovative head to the test and see how it performs. First, let's test the sharpness of the 26 degree single bevel as it comes in the package. It took 250 grams of force to cut through the copolymer wire. That's a 9.5 on a 10 point scale. Now let's test the sharpness of it with the 40 degree micro bevel. It took 175 grams of force to cut through the wire, which is a 10 on a 10 point scale. It penetrated eight inches. 
First, the 26 degree bevel edge retention. It took an additional 50 grams of force to cut through the wire, which is a nine on a 10 point scale. Three. Now we'll test the edge retention of the 40 degree micro bevel head. It took an additional 50 grams of force to cut through the wire, which is a nine on a 10 point scale. It penetrated through 50 layers. It rotated just five degrees at 10 and a half inches. And this is with the, the true single bevel, with the 26 degree single bevel, it barely rotated. And I think that's because of that double bevel in the front, as well as just 26 degrees on a bevel does not produce much rotation. So there is really negligible rotation. It's in pristine condition after the three shots through the MDF. Here you get a good look at the holes and it made a really nice hole. Not very wide, but you see the classic S cut and then it's uh, it's almost round. That's because of the really thick portion of the blade. And then you do see a bit of edge chatter there. That That's largely due to just being such a, a fine bevel there that even with the S7 tool steel, you got a little bit of edge chatter. So here it is after all the durability tests, gone through the MDF three times, the steel plate two times, and then embedded very deeply into the concrete. I mean, it was one of the deepest penetrations into the concrete that I've seen, and it just held up extremely well in the concrete. I mean, it still spins very true. Any bit of wobble that there is, which I don't even see any, is probably just because of the concrete that's fused here that I couldn't get off. But really impressive durability in that hard impact test. So what do you think of the Omega? Hey, I tell you, there's a lot to really like about this broadhead. I love the beefiness of it, right? I mean, it's just really thick. And I love the way the angle, uh, as, as it penetrates, is just smooth and consistent. There's no edge to the ferrule and it's got a true that's a true application of mechanical advantage when it's prying something apart like that it's got a great ratio of uh, of the the width to the length to be able to pry it apart in that dimension um, you know its cut size is not so big at one and one sixteenth inches but if you're using it for a really big animal that's hard to penetrate like a cape buffalo or something like that you know that's really optimal that's what you want so it's not going to score as well as as some other heads that have a much wider cut or, or things like that, but that's okay. You can just look at the scores in the, uh, in the, in the data sheet there below the video description that matter to the most in the animal and set, the animal that you're pursuing and setup that you have. But those are some of the great strengths and it's durability. I mean, really impressive durability. I'm a little bit confused about the, the lay flat sharpening. I love the idea. And if you didn't have to mess with getting rid of the burr on the opposite side, then I think it would be a little bit easier. I, I like the way you could just lay it flat and get that 40 degree on the back side. That makes it really easy to sharpen. Um, and that made it a lot sharper. You know, when it comes just as a regular single bevel without that edge being uh, taken off, it, it wasn't quite as sharp as it was once you do that, but that was really impressive. So again, you check out the score sheet and see how it performed in the areas that matter to you the most and see if it might be a good fit for you.